To get you started on the homework, I wanted to review what we did in class about getting user input using JOption pane. So here I've got a very simple program. I'm storing my own name uh, into a string variable. Remember, string means text. And then I've got two different numbers, and I add them together and save that into sum. And then I'm printing out uh, some text at the end where I say hello, and it says my name, and it says the sum of your favorite numbers is, and then it prints the sum. Um, just so that you know, I've split the print line statement over two lines here, which is allowed. I could do this, which is what we've been doing in class. Or if I wanted to, I could cut all that. I could make a new string called message, and I could make all of this get saved inside message, because all of this is text, and so it's appropriate to save it inside a string variable. And then I could put message in my print statement. So all of those things are possible. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Instead of, ha instead of me typing in my name and my two numbers here, I want to use J option pane so it will pop open a window and ask me, what's my name? And then it'll pop up or open a window and say, what's your favorite number? And then what's your other favorite number? And whatever I type in is going to get saved inside these variables. So the, here's the pattern we talked about. You know that J option pane dot show input dialog is going to pop open a window. Remember, we also talked about the J option pane. Uh, this is not available to us unless we import it. If I move my mouse to hover over, nothing will happen. There we go. So sometimes you have to try it a couple of times. So I clicked. So now I've hovered over it, and you can say import J option pane. And what that does is it adds text at the top here that says import J option pane. And what that means is we're going to bring this command into our program so that we're able to use it. All right, so by itself, this just pops open a window. Here's what it looks like. It's asking me if I want to save. So I typed hi right here, and that's what it says in the window. But I want it so that whatever I type in the box gets saved into a variable. So whatever I type in the box always gets saved as text. So I need to make a string variable, which I'll call response. And now I can say response equals J option pane. Remember, whenever you see an equals, you should think whatever the right hand side is, evaluates to gets saved inside the left hand side. So this right hand side pops open the box, and whatever I type in the box, that's the text that gets saved into response. So I want to ask, what's your name? But then I want to save response inside the name variable, because it's the answer to the question, what's your name? And my name variable is supposed to hold that information. So here I'll take what's inside response, which came from what they typed, and I'll save it inside name. All right, well, if I want to do the same thing for numbers, I'll do the same pattern again. I don't need to say string response again because that would create the response variable a second time, and I can't do that. I already have one called response. So you only need to declare it once. Um, but I can reuse it. So I can say response equals, and I'm going to copy and paste this part, except this time I'm going to ask type a number. OK, so in this case, I'm going to type a number, and whatever number I type gets saved back into this response variable. Here's the thing, though. It gets saved as text, not as a number. I want whatever it is I typed to get saved into this A variable. So what I have to do is I have to take this text and convert it into a number. We talked about what does this in class. So instead of saying int A equals 7, what I put on the right-hand side here, I need to do something that converts this into a number. So I'll say integer.parse int. And then if I was to say 3 here, it takes this text 3, and this command converts it into the number 3 and saves it into A. If I typed 7 here, it would take this number 7, convert it into a number, save it into A. Instead, I want to convert whatever it is the user typed in. So I need to ask myself, where is that saved? And it's inside response. Because remember, this pops open a window. I type in a number. That saves in response. So response is the input that I want to this command, which converts to numbers. All right, so I just got to do that one more time. So I'm going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to say type another number. 
And now I'm going to convert that one into a number, except this time I'm saving the answer into a different variable. I'm saving it into B. Um, but response is still the same because this time when I get to response, I've already saved the most recent thing the user typed, which came from here. So each time I pop open a window, whatever they type, I save back into that same variable and it deletes what used to be there. So it replaces it with the new thing. Okay, so now the program will work exactly the same way as before, except it will ask the user for those numbers. So let's run it and see. So what's your name? My name is Waldo. Type a number, four. Type another number, five. And you see down here in the console, it said, hi Waldo, the sum of your favorite numbers is nine. So this is the kind of thing that you're going to have to do for your programs. Um, just so that you remember, if I wanted these to be doubles instead of integers, I would make the variables double. And instead of saying integer.parseInt, I would say double.parse double, which is a command that does the exact same thing. It takes text as input, so here's the text, and it will try and convert that text into a double. And so I need a double on the other side here to save it into. That's it. Good luck on your homework.